In this video, I hope to explore what a horizontal asymptote is. So here I'm given a rational function, and my goal is to find the equation for the horizontal asymptote. That is the equation for the horizontal line that this graph appears to approach as x gets very large in the positive direction and very large in the negative direction. So for example, if you look at small x values, finite x values, the graph actually looks vertical and takes on all kinds of outputs. But as you trace to the right here, the larger the x values become, it looks like the pattern is that the y values get smaller and smaller. In fact, it looks like they get closer and closer to zero. And likewise, if you were to start here and go to the left, even though we have negative values here, same pattern as you plug in negative x values farther and farther to the left on the real number line, you will get outputs that get closer and closer to zero. So it turns out that this graph, uh, not for really small numbers, for, for very, very large numbers, uh, for input values, the y values approach y equals zero. So what's often the case is I have students dot that horizontal line and actually give me its equation. So this graph looks like y equals zero, not in the short run, but over here it would be hard to distinguish between the line y equals zero and the actual graph of y equals one over x. We'd actually label this y equals uh, zero. So to show this numerically why this happens, I have a table down here. So here's an example where you have a fixed numerator and your denominator is going to change. And like I set up here, we want to let x change so that it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if I was to let x be 1, for example, you would get that y is equal to uh, 1 over x, which is 1 over 1. Well, that's just the number 1. So all that's saying is if you were to uh, plug in x equals 1, you'd get y equals 1. That's that single point right there, uh, 1 comma 1. So let's uh, jump over, and it's not on my list here, but let's say I was to plug in 10. Uh, if you were to plug in 10 uh, for x, you'd get that y is equal to 1 over 10. Uh, and in mathematics, uh, 1 tenth uh, can be simplified as 0.1. So if you look at an x of 10, which isn't even on my list, actually it's right here, I think this is 10 right here. If you plug in x equals 10, your y value is already really, really small. Here's 2, uh, so here would be a y value of 1. I'm supposed to plug in the point or plot the point, rather, uh, x equals 10, y equals 0.1. It's so close to the uh, x-axis here, you see that the curve is right there. So this point right there, uh, it's difficult to see now. Let me uh, get rid of this stuff. This point right here at 10, 0.1 is really, really close to the line uh, y equals 0. And then this pattern just continues. The larger the x value, uh, what happens is your denominator is going to be larger. So now instead of having a denominator of 1 or 10, when I plug in x equals 100, again, fixed numerator, my denominator is now going to be 100. So rather than having 1 over 1 or 1 over 10, now it's 1 over 100, which in mathematics is 0 0.01. So you can see that the larger the x value, the smaller the denominator. And in mathematics, if you have a very large denominator, then what happens is the fraction itself gets smaller. So the larger you make x, the smaller the y value will get. And by the way, this pattern is also true for negative numbers. Had we plugged in, say, uh, negative 1, well, then you would have just had negative 1 over 1. Actually, you would have had 1 over negative 1. Uh, and that would simplify down to be negative 1, which is this point uh, right here. That would be if I plugged in negative 1, you get out negative 1. So let me go over to negative 1. The output would be negative 1 right there. And as you can see, I meant for that to be black, uh, the pattern would be the same as before, except the outputs would be negative. But they would still uh, get really, really small as your denominator got bigger in the negative direction. So for example, had I plugged in negative 10 here, then this would have been 1 over negative 10. And instead of getting 0.1, I would have gotten negative 0.1. Uh, so if I was to move over to negative 10 on the x-axis, that would be way over here somewhere. You'd see that the y value would be really, really small, except negative. It would be negative 0.1. So the idea still holds that as you plug in larger, larger numbers uh, for x, your denominator gets larger, making the y values small. And it's just it turns out that they're negative rather than uh, positive. So it turns out there's a shortcut rule for this. Um, if you look at a rational function, remember what I said about a rational function. A rational function is always some polynomial p over some polynomial q. 
and q of x cannot be zero. And there's a shortcut rule for this. It turns out that it doesn't have to be the case that you have a fixed numerator. It turns out whenever the denominator dominates, whenever the polynomial the denominator dominates the numerator, meaning it's a higher degree polynomial, this is going to happen. You're going to get y equals zero. So it turns out your numerator could be changing uh, and your denominator could be changing, but as long as your denominator is changing faster than your numerator, they're both polynomials, but as long as your uh, denominator is a higher degree, it's going to uh, change so much quicker, it's going to get bigger so much faster uh, than your numerator that you're going to have this same result. So this leads to a general shortcut rule that says if the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is less than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator, then you'll get y equals zero as an asymptote. So shortcut rule number one, if the degree uh, of the numerator is less than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator, you will always get this horizontal asymptote be the horizontal line y equals zero, and that gives you the equation of a line. It's deceptive, it looks just like a y value, but it's the equation of a line, and that equation would be y equals zero. Uh, so for my case, I could have just, just visually inspected from the beginning that my numerator is a polynomial uh, of degree zero. Polynomials, uh, constants are polynomials of degree uh, zero. And I could have easily noticed that my denominator can be thought of as x to the first, so the highest exponents are one, so my denominator is degree uh, one. And then since zero is less than one, what I have is the numerator, uh, the degree of the numerator rather, is less than the degree of the denominator. Because the, uh, this gets really wordy, sometimes I call the degree of the numerator the top, which is really bad language in mathematics. We're supposed to say numerator, and, and what's more, it's not just the numerator, it's the degree of the numerator. And then the degree of the denominator, just for, for uh, make things uh, shorter, uh, then I would say that the degree of the denominator, I just usually label b for the bottom. Again, very bad language in mathematics. It's not only the denominator, not the bottom of the fraction, but we're talking about the degree of the denominator. So uh, as long as your students uh, follow that definition, I would say that my top degree is less than my bottom degree. And whenever that happens, you get a horizontal asymptote. Let me briefly abbreviate that HA. Uh, you get a horizontal asymptote of uh, y equals zero. So sort of as a condensed list, I often give my students a three-prong rule for finding horizontal asymptotes, and this is just one of them. I say if the degree in the top is less than the degree at the bottom, you will get y equals zero. And again, that's the equation of the horizontal line. And what it means is that the graph will look like the horizontal line y equals zero for a very large x in the positive direction and very large x in the negative direction.